In the 1950s, my uh, uncle Gene was a young man fresh out of the Navy living in Los Angeles. He lived with two other young bachelors. One night, uh, the phone woke him up late at night or perhaps even in the wee hours. And he uh, went to answer it a little groggy. And he heard the voice of one of his roommates, Dick, on the phone. And Dick said to him, Gene, uh, I, I need you to come get me. Dick had been having a good time out on the town. And Gene said, where are you, Dick? And he said, I'm at the corner of walk and don't walk. And then he hung up the phone. Two things. I mean, he wasn't entirely wrong in the sense that there were signs there that said walk and don't walk. So he was reading the data before him, but that's not the kind of information that's going to get you home. How many of us are attending to things that don't get us where we need to be? How many of us are spending too much time paying attention to the wrong information, the wrong signs, the kind of things that don't get us home? Instead, we find ourselves stuck at intersections that we don't quite comprehend. We're not entirely sure where we are because we haven't been paying attention to the signs and the information that really orient us, that really help us comprehend and understand and change the world in which we live, that, that provide us with a, a point of departure and, and, a, and, and, a, and a, a, a direction that will lead us in the way we want to go. So often we, we don't know what to do and where to turn and what to go because we've been paying attention to the wrong things and we've been spending time and spending energy and, and spending the precious resource that is our attention. You know, it's a finite resource. Um, every day it, it is a new day, but there are, there are a limited number of them for every single one of us. And how much of our time are we pouring into things that, that don't help us find our way home? The text that we read this morning from Isaiah, you know, promises that um, in returning and rest, we shall be saved. In returning, we shall be saved. That's, that's the assurance. But how do we get home? How do we find a place of restoration and rest and hope and joy? It's by paying attention to the things that bring us there, that guide us and direct us. It's by finding the true North Star, not looking at shiny lights that distract us, but, but don't help us figure out where we are and where we, we want to be. What is the cost to you of always responding, constantly reacting to somebody else's choices, right? What do you have to expend of yourself? Because somebody else is uh, providing all the information that you're reacting and responding to. You know that um, short-term tenant in the White House? Uh, you know, too many people are responding to every all caps tweet uh, and perseverating on, on uh, the, the information that's spewing out from there as if they were allowing him to take up, you know, residence in their brain. And look, you know that man never pays his bills. So, so don't, don't let him have space in your head without paying rent. Don't do it. Don't, don't be reacting to information coming at you from all sides, but, but you are in charge 
of what you read and what information you gather, you're in charge of, of, of how you spend your time and your energy and your attention. You're in charge of what you attend to, what signs you read and what data you bring into your decision-making and your thinking and, and your choosing. You're in charge. I mean, sometimes that's new information to me um, again and again, right? Um, oh, I, I don't have to think about this thing that doesn't get me home. The scripture also uh, says, you know, look left and look right. And then listen, because there's going to be this voice behind you. In other words, when you stop and you orient yourself, when you look left and you look right, if you're still and quiet for a moment, there's a quiet, gentle voice behind you, behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. You know, what that reminds me of is uh, if you've ever tried to help a small child get across the street um, and, and you, you want to help them learn how to safely cross the street. And so you reiterate every time you do it, right? Okay, so look left and look right and then look left again. And then you gently uh, encourage them forward. I think, I think this text in Isaiah promises that to each of us from God, a, a gentle, caring, nurturing presence that if we stop and look around and orient ourselves and figure out where we are, will help us get home, will help us get to the place and the people that, that we want to be. But to do that, you know, we've got to filter out a lot of stuff, a lot of what I often call nonsense and noise right? And there's plenty of it. Now, this doesn't mean we don't ever get to do things that are frivolous or, or you know, read comics or, or, or any of this, right? It's not about um, always being very serious. It's also not about ignoring the real and painful truths that exist in our time. But it's about really finding ways to use our time and our energy and our efforts and our hope constructively. And about figuring out what we need to pay attention to and what we need to attend to in order to be constructive participants in truly building a just community, a beloved community and truly building what we call, because Jesus called it, the kingdom of God. We're not asked to live in denial or to ignore um, uh, the realities that make us uncomfortable. But in fact, we're actually asked to, to dig deeply so that we, we truly and faithfully understand those uncomfortable realities. And to do that, we, we really have to sort ourselves out and, and figure out where we are. You know, we're not going to get home if we're lying to ourselves about where we really are. Both of those things would be problems, but we have to stop and uh, pay attention. Not, not just to any sign that's before us, because the walk and the don't walk is there, but that's not going to help anybody come find us. You know, we're called as Jesus' disciples, a, a, a critical component, a critical function of being one of Jesus' disciples is living for and with a purpose. In other words, having a direction, having an intention, having an objective. And in order to travel towards that objective, we have to have a sense of direction. Ram Das said it this way, he says, you know, we're all just walking each other home. We're all just walking each, each other home. The uh, story I've talked about with my uncle Gene, you know, is sort of family lore. And um, uh, I, I was 
clarifying some things with my mom about it. And she thinks that my uncle Gene being the really good guy that he was, got in the car and sort of knew the stomping ground that Dick was likely to be in and probably went and managed to get him home. Uh, you know, I think that's ex exactly how, how God responds to us when we wander lost, that uh, a, a guiding hand and a guiding voice and, and, and plenty of signs appear before us to help us get home. And, and you find that we're most successful when we actually attempt to do that together, to hold hands and, and look both ways and, and then cross the street towards home, not alone, but in, in community. Those are the kind of things that will help us not get stuck, not get trapped and stuck at the, at the corner of walk and, and don't walk. You and I are people of good news. This is a core uh, component of what it means to, to be a Christian, right? To, to be people of good news. Jesus came to bring good news. So, so we take it as a tenant of our faith that there has to be good news present in the world. Like it, 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 It's not possible that there's not good news. So if we're not seeing it, it's because we're not looking at the right things. Look at the right things, read the right signs, look left and right and, and listen for the, the quiet voice speaking behind you. These are the things that will help us find our way home. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.